Okay, uh, so we're doing book two, Sutra 43. By austerity, impurities of body and senses are destroyed and occult powers are gained. The direct meaning of tapas is to burn, as was discussed in the first sutra of this portion, but the physical tapas of fasting, we burn out excess fat away along with the toxins our bodies have accumulated. By mental tapas, we burn our old impressions. By verbal tapas, observing silence, we control speech. When we burn, we feel some heat and pain. We undergo suffering. So tapas also means to accept suffering. If someone suffers, he or she is blessed because by that suffering, some impurities are purged out. In order to make our minds clean and steady, we must accept suffering, pain, and poverty. It is even more beneficial if at the same time that we accept pain, we bring happiness to others. So accept the pain of others. We never lose by accepting pain. The more pain, the more gain, and no pain, no gain. We should never run from it. In our lives, there are hundreds of opportunities for tapas. Even a cloth must undergo tapas to become clean. What will the laundry man do with my cloth? Will he fold it, put some sandalwood paste and a flour on it and give it back to me? No, first he'll soak it in boiling water with soap. Then he'll beat it every which way. Then he'll tumble and roll and squeeze it in the washing machine. After that, he'll dry it in a hot chamber and iron it. Only then does the cloth lose all its dirt and grime. It undergoes tapasya to become pure. The laundryman has no hatred for the cloth when he does all these things to it. He only wants to make it pure. It is out of his love that he inflicts pain. The mind too must be washed, squeezed, tossed, dried, and ironed. Don't think that if someone causes us pain, they hate us, rather that they are helping us to purify ourselves. If we can think like this, we are real yogis. If anybody hurts our feelings, we should just smile at them. Thank you, I want more and more. I know you want me to become pure soon. Bring your friends to also inflict pain. If we understand this point and accept it, we'll never find fault with anybody who abuses, scolds, or insults us. If flowery words make us happy, but insults upset us, we know our minds are not yet strong. A word of abuse helps us to understand our weaknesses. My master said, adapt, adjust, accommodate. Bear insult, bear injury. That is the highest sadhana or spiritual practice. To go into a corner and say mantra is easy sadhana. Anyone can do it. But if we are insulted and keep a serene mind, it is higher than saying thousands of rosaries of japa. That is tapasya. The power to control the body and senses comes by tapasya. If we accept everything, what can affect us? If somebody calls us a fool, accept it. A wonderful person, accept it. Once a man wanted to anger a saint, he began insulting him. You dirty rogue, see how many people you have ruined with your teachings. The saint remained quiet, smiling at his tormentor. Don't you understand my language, the man asked. Yes, sure. You mean you've understood my insults? The man was incredulous. I did. Then how can you keep quiet? The saint answered, son, suppose you brought me some fruit and I refused it, what would you do? Well, I would have to take it back. Yes, continued the saint. In the same way, I don't enjoy all these things you've brought me, so you can just take them back. Handling things this way takes real strength and courage. A person who can only strike back physically may be physically strong, but mentally weak. Mental strength comes by tapasya, accepting pain. And pain is no longer pain, but it is joy because we have realized the benefit of it. A beautiful example of this is the mother who feels so much joy bringing in, bringing forth a child, although it may be very painful. She will never avoid the pain, rather she welcomes it, knowing it is the price she pays for the great benefit later on. This is always a good one to come back to. You always kind of need this reminder on the path, especially in these moments of difficulty, our topless is going to always sort of look different as we meet every unique moment that we encounter. And it's never necessarily easy, but it's definitely something that can become easeful and it changes our perspective on things instead of, um, I don't know everybody, the buzzword recently has been spiritual bypassing, right? Instead of thinking that, you know, if it's not pleasant, I'm not gonna participate in it. Um, tapas teaches us that there's a necessary acceptance 
in the fact that there's going to be suffering in the material world. I think it was Gina who texted me the other day. She's like, is this because it's Kali Yuga? <laughs> All this stuff is happening because we're in Kali Yuga, which the yogis predicted would come to pass that it's this time of chaos and uh, misdirection and people not, most people not being connected and really. So it's, you know, it's a rough time to exist in. And with that knowledge, we have to be able to practice topless. Right? If you can't, then you'll fall off the path and you'll lose all the benefits of it. Uh, this idea that we can just, you know, thinking about the clothing getting washed, you know, the super, sort of superficial washing, I think is what people expect or want from their yoga practice. And they get kind of a rude awakening when they start going through the, um, spin cycle <laughs> as they're working with the mind because the mind becomes so wild especially in our culture the mind is so wild and even with facebook and social media i found that it's made people's minds even more wild and unrestrained it's like you can speak so horribly to a stranger you know i was watching the um protests down the road for me in Massapequa online and you know you have these people who are peacefully walking down the street and then there are all these people on the side like just cursing at them and giving them the figure but they kept going along on their path and you know doing the right thing even in the face of adversity and I think that that's a superpower you know Pam posted that thing where her sister said I'm so sage so wise everyone's gonna give you crap <laughs> In life especially when you try to stand on principle as Ali always says like if you stand on principle you're often standing alone and that could be really hard and if we gain the ability to practice tapia the tapasya then we're going to be able to get through those moments and it really is a superpower that's what they mean about you gain occult powers it's like you can overcome material suffering. Not that you stop material suffering, but there's like a way out. Does anybody have anything to add to this? Any thoughts on your own experience of tapas? You can unmute yourself. I am really going through it right now with this and I'm really glad to hear the sutra today because it's exactly what I needed to hear. Um, I might be in a situation where I'm not sure what's going to happen with my job um, and I'm like very scared of that right now but yesterday um, actually it was the day before yesterday we, so I work for a digital magazine, firstforwomen.com and womensworld.com. And, you know, we occupy a large space in the media. And my team decided that it was important for us to report on what's going on in the world right now. And we made an article. Um, so we have a lot, of, a lot of conservative readers and we're aware of that. But because we do occupy space in the media, we feel it was our responsibility to report on what's going on. And we, we, we made a very vetted, like very soft article that was just a list of eight charities that you could donate to. And we had approval from like our boss and everything. Like we went through this whole process of even knowing if we should do it. And we decided as a team that we have to do it. So we did that two days ago. We put the, the story, you know, up on social media as well. Um, we put the story up on both websites. And then yesterday, um, we, we've kind of been monitoring like the Facebook comments and stuff to make sure um, that nothing hateful um, stayed on. So you can hide the comments when you have a business profile. So it wasn't, we got like, it, it, we got a few very negative comments and we just hid them. But we also got like a lot of really positive feedback, which we were surprised about, honestly. Um, there was even one woman who commented saying that her and her daughter would be subscribing to the paper magazine now because this was awesome. And they, like we had a lot of really positive feedback. And there was one person who sent a message. Yes, I think it was yesterday um, to the Facebook page. 
um, telling us that to unsubscribe her from our trashy magazine, blah, blah, blah. And our boss, yes, our, well, the head of the U.S. of my company made us take it down. Yeah. And they made us take it down off all social media and off both websites. And I... I am beyond myself right now. Like I didn't really sleep last night. We have, you know, African American people on our team who had to read that message, who had to see from our boss, like the head of the US of the company say that we are not even allowed to have a list of charities up on the website. They weren't not allowed to be political. And I have a feeling I might I might lose my job over this because I don't want my work. Um, I don't want my work under, under these people anymore. Mm -hmm. And I just, I like, I know that this is going to be a big deal and I'm going to make it a big deal. And that's going to probably bring some suffering into my life. But at the same time, if I don't do something, I'm not going to be able to deal with myself. And I'm just, I just, I'm, I'm not going to be able to, to, to look these people in the face I'm just not going to be able to do it. So I, I'm in this position where I kind of know that whatever suffering is going to come as a result of this just needs to happen because in order for me to live truthfully and in alignment with my morals that I can't allow this to happen. Boy, that's intense, Ashley. I can't believe that. Like, I could not believe that that happened. Was it from the one Facebook comment or were they getting a lot of heat, like from a lot of different directions, do you think? It was because of the one person who said that. Well, that was a mighty big mistake on their part, huh? Seriously, I'm like, of all, like, there are about 20 comments. There were about 20 comments on the post and a lot of them were really positive. And they just chose to listen to the one negative one. And to me that, you know, you're saying you don't like to be political, but especially like the lady who made the comment, like you click on her page and it's just a bunch of like Trump memes and like a bunch of stuff. and to me, it's clear that you don't have a problem being political. You just want it to be what, what you believe. And I, I don't believe any of those things. I can't believe that some of my coworkers who are black had to see that yesterday. And I, I don't want my name. I don't want my name associated with these people anymore. I feel you. I mean, hopefully you guys can collectively speak to him and try to make him do the right thing. Or her, I don't know who the. Yeah, we are. Um, we're drafting an email today to send to him, and I'm sure it's going to result in some blowback, and they're probably going to get rid of me. But that's okay. You got to do the right thing, and you got to do the right thing. It's this is not the time to be passive, right? I mean, that's complicit. Exactly. And I'm like, you are a major media company. Like, how dare you? I think they're trying to go by the old rules and we're in a new world now. It's exactly. just not gonna, it's not gonna work anymore. Exactly. Like you can't just sit by idly and pretend and like put your blinders on and pretend like this is not happening. Because the blowback, he's going to even realize the blowback that though. Yeah, that's, I'm yeah. proud of you, Ashley. Yeah, I'm proud of you too, Ashley. And if there's anything I can do to stand by you, I will help you yeah. share, find another job. Or if you want to rewrite the article, I'll share it on my page. If you want to write it like independently, yeah, or if you're allowed to do that, I'll share all the charities from your yeah. team. I'll ask my coworker because she wrote it and it was great. It was really great. She, we spent like a whole day like working on this thing and vetting it so much to make it like as soft and not, um, you know, overtly political as possible. And even so, they just totally tore it down. Racism shouldn't be a political divide. That's what I'm like. It's not, it's not political. It's like a human suffering problem. This is not like a political issue. And for this woman who was commenting so badly about that, to make that a political issue, it shows that she's a racist. Exactly. And that's not something that should be tolerated by any, any business in America. 
Right. And I'm like, anyone, in America, anyone in the world anymore, right? This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I'm like, so what? That this one angry lady wants to unsubscribe for the magazine. Let her, Let her go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Let her go. Let her go be in her, you know, echo chamber. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I feel like it's even like, act, like, I feel like you're like, can't believe it. Like sometimes when we're in it, like we can't believe it. But when you step back, you're like, you know what? I can believe it. Like, no, it's always been that way. And now you just lifted the veil yeah. and like, you are just putting like your foot down and you're like, no more. <clears throat> That's really hard. And that's why I want you to know, like, I'll support you however I can, because sometimes it's easier to just be like, you know what, whatever, fine, I'll just take it down and walk your, the other way. But there's so many other companies you could work for that would support you and appreciate you. Yeah, and I, I can't, like, I can't know that they believe that and have my, my work be under them. I, like, I can't do that. Is it, I don't, I don't, and I, this is, I feel like where I catch myself in moments where I'm not making excuses for anybody, but like, do you think it's just a matter of you, like, just revealing the light to this guy and being like, look, like, you're doing the wrong thing. Like, do you think he'll shift or like, he's just like firm? He didn't, he didn't even, like, he didn't even, he didn't even ask, ask us about it. He just made the order to take it off of everything. So that leads me opportunity. to- Opportunity, just give That's what I feel like, like yeah. maybe it is. Maybe it was just like a power, like a stressed out, like people that are in these powerful leader roles, like they get stressed and they make a decision. I told my New York sales manager this week, he needs to step it up and start leading by example. And he wrote back, thank you. Like, like they get like tunnel and they need like a smack in the face sometimes. Yeah, so our idea is basically to send this email and to just ask for an explanation and to explain our side of why we don't yeah. think we can now. So I'll think how he responds. And but if they don't put it back up, then I think I'm out. Well, let me know how it goes because okay. either I want to support it or boycott it, and I don't remember the names of the magazines. So. Well, the thing is, like you know, you have to go public if they decide not to. I know. No, oh, no, I'm gonna light them up. Yeah, but he might. He yeah, like what Pam said. He, he might be panicking. I mean, yeah. think about the four locks and the four keys in this situation. Is he being wicked? I don't know. Time will tell in his response. Yeah you right yeah I gotta see what what he says but yeah I don't know to me also there are a lot of other moral issues with the magazine like they put they they the paper magazine not the digital side but um they they write a lot of crazy headlines they also on last month on the cover of Women's World had like this really conservative lady I forget she's the wife of like some some like some like gun, gun lobbyists. So they clearly like, like to be political when it is in alignment with certain politics. But when we did that, it was a problem. So that makes me a little bit like, I don't care for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, but again, this is, this is a human rights issue. It's not for anybody to try to make it political is ridiculous and that woman who is posting i like i've been sort of trying to see into the other side of things um so like i you know i've i friended a bunch of like crunchy mothers who are very very you know and they they're very republican and it feels like they think that trump is stopping this ring of pedophiles so they're like he's not perfect but he's saving all these children and then they get like this echo chamber of information where they're like, oh, these are riots and everybody's, you know, they're just hurting people. So like they're getting, it, I think there has to be this moment of like patience to shed light on the reality of things because there's so much misinformation coming at people that sometimes we can just like, you know, I, I kept catching myself from earlier. Like I can't assume this woman's a racist, who knows? Maybe she thinks that, th that this is like some, who knows what she thinks is my point. Like maybe it, 
in her mind, it has nothing to do with race. In her mind, it's like she was told some misinformation and she thinks she's being a good person. Who knows? Who knows? Like, we can only try to come to... We can just say she's showing up as a racist. Right. And, like, maybe she doesn't know she's showing up as a racist. So, like, how do we have that conversation with people right now? And, like, give them the opportunity. And, again, if they fail, if you give them the opportunity, it's different than just, like, yeah that's what i'm trying to do i'm like trying to engage with people very peacefully on these comment threads instead of like unfriending people and blocking people and the conversations have actually been like starting to change minds on both sides so i mean i don't know i think that division is the big issue here and miscommunication is the huge issue here yeah i also think that there's no chance she even clicked into the link like i like she didn't even read it so it's yeah it's it's the echo chamber like you said like she just sees that and she's like get out of my chamber like i don't want that (laughs) these are the people that are ruining recess for all of us i know these one people like just kick her off the magazine i would have subscribed and filled her spot i mean seriously now now they're gonna lose nine more i know it's not gonna be good for them no, it's not. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, if this comes to a head and it ends up with him saying like, no, we don't do that, then I'm going to go and everyone's going to know that you don't do that. Because the internet is public. <laughs> <laughs> I would just wait to post anything before you have your oh, new yeah. job locked I'm down because that. then they're going to be like, I'm not hiring this crazy lady. <laughs> Basher. <laughs> Oh my god. But like how do we look at these situations as like what he's saying, ways for us to purify ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But clarity of intention, clarity of action, you know, standing standing for the good of all. That's like a big deal. That's a big spiritual practice. So, yeah. I just want to say I'm proud of all of us on this call every morning, not just Ashley. I'm extra proud of her, but I feel like we as yogis are really the light workers and it's really hard. I mean, we have to keep showing up and we have to keep doing this hard stuff. And I need guidance. Like, I don't know what, I talk, text Amanda every day. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like spinning in a circle. I had a thought the other day about our conversation. I was, I was thinking, um, you know, for, for a lot of people in America right now, it's like right in our face. And every time I message a a friend who's, you know, who I expect, oh, they must be really, really going through it. They're always like, oh, I'm okay. Don't worry, I'm I'm okay. You know, this is hard, but I'm okay. And I thought yesterday, I'm like, this is what they're dealing with covertly every single day of their lives. And just because it's becoming like apparent to us now, it's not changing what they've had to deal with and they've been trying to tell us has been going on. So I feel like this moment is like, they're just sitting here and trying to educate people on like the experience that everyone's, I mean, I don't know, I can't speak to it. Cause again, I'm not like in that position, but it just seems like me, me and Pam are now like, we have to do something. We have to help all the people, we have to, you know? And like, that's, you know, like why you're like, but then I stop myself and I go sit down and I'm like, yeah, you know, like let them have their, you know, voices. People shouldn't be silenced any longer. And this is an awful moment, but it's also um, revealing a lot to everyone. It's like the veil is being lifted. Oh my like I think everything. I'm like, dude, do you live under a rock? <laughs> <laughs> So and I also like I looked at other publications like Good Housekeeping and like Martha Stewart Living and like these are conservative publications and they are not being silent about this. Oh. And I looked at all the comments on their stuff and they have hundreds of hateful comments, but they are not taking their stuff down. And I'm like, model yourself after the other bigger brands than us. Like what? Where are you? And also, <laughs> isn't is your reader base mostly female? Yes. Like, why is there a male running it? I mean, this is starting to drive me nuts. <laughs> That's another thing. And he comes from like Wire Cutter Magazine, which is like a business. Yeah, it's probably it's, acquired it or something, right? Yeah. Just promote Ashley to run it. 
Oh my God. I was like going off to my coworkers yesterday. They were like, you need to be the one who drafts this email because nobody is as like fired up. This is what I'll say. Cause this is what I did. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'll just tell you what I did. I wrote this manager, the meanest email. I mean, like it was so mean. And then I deleted it and I wrote a calmer one. <laughs> yeah. I know that I have to be like, I, my intention in going into this is to figure out why he decided to make this decision and to try to make him see the other side and I'll see what he says from there. But he will have the opportunity because I also want it documented. Like I want to know the real reason. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I just had this thought. I'm like, I'm wondering if it's not even a battle of him saying, okay, put that article back up, but saying, okay, keep that article down, but you can continue to write in that direction. Because if it's a matter of just putting that article back up, but going backwards, or keeping that one down and moving forward, like maybe that's, it's not like, I mean, if he's, if that article never makes it back up, but you can shift your language in your articles, then I think it's a success for you too. I would think that as well, but I am 99% sure they will never let us report on this again. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. We will see. Well, I guess you need to meditate. Ashley, just playing devil's advocate as I'm listening to what Pam's saying and listening to, I mean, I'm really feeling for you and, and your situation right now it must be really tough but is there a place for you to stay and no, hmm. sometimes I feel like I'm the lone voice in my situation on certain things that I believe in and I've, I've thought oh I can't be here anymore I can't I can't work for this woman or whatever, <laughs> whatever i I've been in, but then sometimes being the lone voice is harder on you, but it's an important voice. And if all the voices leave the room, then it leaves everybody else to do the wrong, continue doing the wrong thing. And sometimes you have to be the lone voice to stand up and make maybe one or two people in the room go, oh, she has a point. Maybe, you know, um, just consider that too before you quit. Let them fire you, Ashley. Just keep making your point until. Wait, I have a better idea. Do what Jerry uh, Maguire did and just bring everyone with you and storm out of there and start your own magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is like, we're all so upset about it. It's not like my whole team is upset. And we had a meeting yesterday at three o'clock with our boss who came on and was like, great job on this article, guys. Like, I'm so proud that we did this. And one hour later is when we got this thing. And we were like, like my manager, we, we were talking about, she was crying. She was like really upset. Like, it wasn't just me. And, but I know that they, that's the thing, Jackie, you're right. Because it's like, they wouldn't say anything. If I didn't have this idea to draft this email, nothing would be done at all because they wouldn't want to talk about it. They wouldn't even want to challenge it. And I'm in that position a lot. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Amanda and with Jackie. Like, that's what I mean. Like, we're the light workers. Let them say goodbye to you. And what are they going to say goodbye to you for? Standing I know. If they fire you for this, I mean, they're not going to. They're not. They won't. Then you'll really have something to write about. I can do that. Yeah, that's. It's worth making a big stink and then hopefully you create change from the inside. I know that's been one of the big conversations, right? Do you create change from the inside or do you step away? Yeah. Can you change, can you change the inside when there's systemic racism? Yeah. That's the question. Can you change the inside? You can only change yourself, right? But maybe through your example, who knows? Right. Yeah. I think you it's keep like doing you each day. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely doesn't help them to only have people like them working there. Right. It's a women's magazine. They should be representing all different kinds of women. Most of our readership is colored women. 
we have like that information. Like oh, so we, that has to go in your email too. Yeah. Yeah. That's like we we conducted a survey. Like we know who our readers are. And like, yeah, a lot of them are conservative. Like there's a good portion of them, but over 50% of them are women of color. There are a lot of conservative people who are marching. You know exactly. what I mean? Like this is not yeah. the outliers that are, a lot of them are marching and a lot of them are sharing information online and it's like, a lot of us I don't use labels like I, li liberal conservative democrat republican like I think we just need to shed these labels like and let us just blend together now like we're just humans marching exactly and I'm going like, to the point that this is not a political issue and that like we're representing our readers and it's our job you. to do that it's our job. I take my job as a journalist seriously. I take the space that we occupy here very seriously. Like I'm a, primarily a health and wellness writer. And when I write a health article, I research the shit out of what I'm doing because it like thousands of people are reading this. And if you have, you know, inaccurate information or things that are not health, like, what's the point? Racism destroys the health. Of people of color it's exactly. I mean, it's documented across the board i mean if you just look like the what was the most recent example like women women who are birthing who are of color their mortality rate is obscene and they did all these studies to sort of see if there were any correlations or it was racism like they wouldn't listen to them if they had a problem it's terrible it's it's a deathly issue deadly issue racism like it's totally under your purvey as a health and wellness writer to be writing about this issue right now. It's yeah, it's a human rights problem. Yeah, and I write a lot about mental health and like all that too. And okay. so, yeah. How many people are on your team? Um, less than ten. I think we need to meditate for them today and you. Yeah, yeah, my coworker just texted me like, how are you feeling? <laughs> uh, but sorry, I took up all the time today, guys. <laughs> I want to apologize. I'm so glad to hear from you and your point of view and what you're going to be doing. I feel like it's so relevant to the tapas. Yeah. It's so relevant. To, like, this is tapas right here. Like, how do you live your yoga? It's true. And it's like to 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 like go and go in and have to do all this is definitely going to be it's going to be a crazy day it's going to be a lot but i'm ready you just stay present as much as possible and view them as your teachers right mm -hmm. ashley i'll be sending you reiki <laughs> thank you i will need it <laughs> and if you need to hop on Zoom or something later, I'm sure we can all have a yeah. follow-up chat or catch up tomorrow. Yeah. Just let us know. Yeah. Tune in tomorrow and let us know what's going on. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's do some pranayama. Let's start with Bellows breath. Mm. So the bellows of the fire. You guys ever seen one of the right? It pumps air. So we're gonna focus on the diaphragm. Pushing out, pressing in, pushing out, pressing in. We'll do it for 30 to start. And inhale deeply. In and out of the nose. Exhale deeply all the way. Inhale halfway. And count to 30. Inhale all the way. Hold the breath in at the top. Exhale all the way out. Inhale all the way. Exhale all the way. Inhale halfway. And 30.
Inhale the way. Hold the breath. Exhale all the way out. Do some bamboo bee breathing. Or Mori. So take your thumbs and close off the ears. Take the peace fingers and close off the eyes. We can inhale through the nose and then exhale hum out the nose like we're buzzing like a bumblebee. Try to keep the palate soft and open and bring the vibration up to the back of the throat. If you want to take it to the next level, you'll lock the bottom and lock the top so you close the eyes and turn them up to the space between the eyebrows. Squeeze in and up through the pelvic floor, the root lock. It will take five. Mm -hmm. Alternate nostril breathing, take the right hand, fold the peace fingers into the center of the palm, Vishnu Mudra. Close off the right nostril with the thumb and the left nostril with the ring finger. Inhale through both nostrils and exhale through both nostrils. Close off the right nostril with the thumb, inhale through the left. Close off both, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close up both. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close up both. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close up both. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close up both. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close up both. Exhale through the left. Place the hands on the knees, closing your eyes. And taking your meditation practice.
Bringing the hands to prayer, bowing the head. Namaste, everybody. Namaste, bye, everybody. Bye. Namaste. Have a day, Ashley. Yeah, have a day. Good luck. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. Good luck, Ashley. Bye, thank you. Good bye. luck.